one trillion, not million, not billion. I said trillion. So what does this number mean? So in this episode of the seven fear squad, I'm going to reveal to you the meaning of this number and how you can get your money right. So you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire in this episode, starting in three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Sapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a downtown western suburb of Chicago, Illinois. And uh, not only am I gonna share with you the meaning of this $21 trillion, but I wanna share with you in this episode how you can get your money right, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Now, big disclaimer up front, I want you to know this is not a get rich quick overnight type of video. This is in a video we're gonna say, hey, put all your money inside Bitcoin type video. If that's what you're expecting, I apologize. Please click off right now and enjoy another YouTube video on something like that's just not on the Seven Figure Squad channel. Now, why is it important for you to make sure you get your money right here, especially as we launch 2021? Well, according to an Infotech research and survey done by Highland Solutions, 63% of all Americans, especially after the pandemic, are living paycheck to paycheck. That's correct, paycheck to paycheck. Now, I know many of you probably already knew that. Many of you probably thought the number's a little lower, but it's 63%, more than half of America is struggling financially. And by the way, when people try to say and play it off like, it's good, I'm comfortable, it's all right. Listen, it's a knee jerk reaction. I know it's not right, and I'll explain here in a second. But right now, many people in America are financially locked down. Now, how do you stick up and stand out? It's very simple. I'm gonna discuss the three C's here that you need to pay attention to, so let's get started. Real quick before I begin, I just wanna give you some encouragement. In America today, there's approximately 18.4 million folks and citizens in America that their net worth or wealth exceeds $1 million, according to the US Treasury. Now, also, take a look at this as well. We went to this website called usdebtclock.org. Check this out, usdebtclock.org. A lot of interesting data is on that site. The average income, individual income in America, is $35,000 a year, 35,294, okay, at the shooting of this video. The average income in America per individual, East Coast, West Coast, New York, San Francisco, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Florida, Texas, 35,294 per year. But check this out too as well. The average home in America is approximately 326,883. Now ask yourself a question. Can an average person making 35,294 afford to buy the average home in America. Let's check this out, let's break this down real quick. On average, somebody's making about $2,900 a month, making $35,000 a year, okay? So $2,900 a month, approximately, if you round up, it's approximately, if a kid paid every two weeks, it's approximately $1,500 a paycheck. Assuming no income taxes, no deduction are taken out of your paycheck, when does that happen, right? But assuming that no income taxes are taken out of your paycheck, the average income making 35, average person making an income on 35,294, they're approximately taking on $1,500 a paycheck every two weeks. But let's break this out even further. If they seek to get a home of $326,000, they have to put out a down payment according to FHA, okay? They put a, a first time home buyer program, an FHA loan, three and a half percent down payment, that's $11,428. When is a person making $1,500 every two weeks have a chance to accumulate and save $11,428? I don't know, you answer that question, but assume that they did, their principal and interest on a $326,000 home is 1321. If you add in taxes and insurance, the mortgage payment is approximately $2,040. Check this out though, if the average person making $1,500 per paycheck every two weeks, a good lion's share is going towards a mortgage. So do you think the average income in America can afford the average home in America? Chances are, no. That's what we mean about being financially locked down. Okay, so let's get into it. If you wanna get your money game right and tight for 2021 and beyond, like a cash flow millionaire, like a first generation cash flow millionaire, let's focus number one on cash flow. Everything starts from there. Now, coming from the military, I used to make $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines. It's not a lot of cash flow. So, so some of the things that will keep you down in terms of low income, in terms of low cash flow, a few things, some of your enemies. You don't improve your skills. You got skills that anybody else can do. Uh, you don't have the right type of education and certification or knowledge or apprenticeship 
to increase what you get paid and you don't have a system working on your behalf. So how do you fix that? So here's some of the things you fix. To improve your skills. One of the things I learned how to do is I learned sales. And was it a car dealership? Guess where I learned sales? I learned sales at a restaurant. I learned sales at Jiffy Loop. How? When Jiffy Loop hood technician job presented me the opportunity to present the, the data from a, somebody's car, uh, car report to present to the customer what they need to improve, their air filter, their rear differential fluid, their transmission fluid, uh, PCV valve, windshield wipers, right? Additional services I can sell on top of your normal old change at Jiffy Loop. Guess what I, I started learning how to do? I learned how to upsell. I learned how to sell. When I worked as an Olive Garden server, when I came out with two bottles, hey, good evening, ma'am or sir, right, whatever. Uh, would you like to start off tonight with a bottle of wine? I'd sell the house wine. Our job as a server is to sell wine, alcohol, liquor, appetizer, full entree, dessert. That's what we call a full ticket. Because the higher the ticket, guess what it is increased to as well? The higher your tips. So I learned sales through Jiffy Lube, and I learned sales through being a server at a restaurant at an Olive Garden. And guess what I learned how to do? I learned to improve those skills. I learned how to communicate. I learned how to persuade. I learned how to expose a problem and then create a solution or find a way to make somebody's life better. That's the way you improve your skills. So therefore, if you improve those skills, guess what? In exchange, you have the opportunity to get paid better. I learned how to improve my communication. I learned how to speak better. I learned how to look at somebody eye to eye. I learned how to make sure I was convicted about what I was selling. It's improving your skills. I learned the ethics and morals about what I stood for. That's improving your skills and the, the mindset of how you deliver your message. Systems. Systems is a short acronym for save yourself time, energy, and money. Systems. What am I talking about? Standard operating procedures if you're thinking about the military. So if I'm presented with the same issue over and over and over again, how do I teach somebody else to do the same thing? How do I duplicate the way I solve that problem into somebody else? So therefore, I can focus on the main thing by improving my skills and having other people creating jobs, creating other opportunities to teach other people to do the same thing too as well. This is how the military gets 18, 19, 20 year olds to fix multi-million dollar machines. This is how the military recruits kids from college to recruit them into the Naval Academy, the Air Force, uh, the Air Force Academy, the, the uh, West Point, to recruit them to serve the military, to handle these multi-million, multi-billion dollar machines and weapons. Why? Through systems and standard operating procedures. So they take something that's complex and they find a way to make it very simple. I remember being in the military, every time we fly in a helicopter, we had a pre-flight checklist, in-flight checklist, post-flight checklist. So it's not an example of systems. The same thing can happen to your cash flow. What's your system in making money outside clocking in, clocking out? How do you improve your systems? How do you, last but not least here in this category, evolve? In a previous video, we talked about how to earn income, how to have passive income, how to have portfolio income. Start to expand your ways and methodology of making money outside of just clocking in, clocking out, which is what 90% of people in America do and what we just exposed that the average person in America can't even purchase the average home. Do you want to be average? Or do you want to be part of the 18.4 million people in America that has a net worth or wealth that exceeds a million dollars? Or even better yet, how would you like to be a first generation cash flow millionaire? Every year you got seven figures coming. Boom, boom, boom. Listen, I'm going to share you a quick story. When I learned sales, I, learned, I got involved in the insurance industry. And guess what I became? I became a sales leader. Here's a picture of me becoming the number one producer out of 25,000 licensed agents. I was a 130, 140% commission contract. And guess what I learned how to do with that 130%, 140% contract? I learned how to create, and create, create systems, take those same systems and how I sold term insurance and how I sold index universal life insurance and how I sold annuities and I did my seminars and how I bought leads. I taught that to my guys. I became a great sales manager. Guess what happened at system though? My best people started leaving me. You know why? because they find other opportunities to get the same contract somewhere else because those type of contracts, I learned how to be a manager, but I didn't learn how to retain. And then I created even better systems on how do I really scale but keep my best people? And then I started becoming a business owner. Then I created those, those systems and the process and started creating company culture. And then I started having larger and larger conversations and eventually become a CEO of your own brand, CEO of your own operation. That's an evolution. See, oftentimes people say, man, just because I go to Vistaprint, I can print out a Vista card and I put CEO in the title, that makes me a CEO. Ah, wrong. You've got to evolve.
And that takes time. And how to accelerate that is having somebody in your corner, like a mentor, somebody that's been there, done that. It's a lot of resources out there. If you go look for them, just can't uh, email one or two people, say, hey, uh, I want you to mentor me. No, no, no. Here's how you can mentor me. This is the benefit of you mentor me. And then when you mentor me, here's, here's what's in it for you, mentor. Because I want to learn from you. For example, the gentleman shooting this video right now, his name is Ivan. Let me, let, me, let me take this video real quick. Here's Ivan. Say hi, Ivan. Hold on, let me take this camera. This is Ivan. <laughs> hi, Ivan. Right? So he, 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 comes, he, he, comes, he comes to me. We're, we're doing this like impromptu, right? So he comes to me. He said, Matt, I just want to work for you. I'm going to Columbia College right now. I want to just shoot some photos for you. Anyway, he worked himself into a job. Now he's working here full time. That's Ivan. <laughs> Got you. Okay, so that's how you evolve from becoming a sales leader to a sales manager, business owner to CEO. It happens not overnight, but over time. But listen, if you say you can accomplish it in the next one, three, five, seven, ten years, and your life starts to change for the rest of your life for the better, is that considered an overnight success? I don't know. You tell me. It's your definition. All I'm saying is this. If you just depend on a job, nine to five, that type of mentality, Listen, earlier this week, we were talking to a high-level corporate executive. She's a C-suite, sharp young lady, sharp, in her early 40s. Got to a level of, of C-suite, you know, chief this or chief that. You know what I'm talking about, C-suite? She goes, Matt, I just helped my company sell a multi-billion dollar acquisition to another company, okay? And I still feel like number 4,001 employee. This is a, somebody from the C-suite, Somebody that's up there that people, you have VPs reporting to her and middle managers reporting to them. But still she felt unfulfilled because it was a job. She just felt like an employee. Now, with that being said, she wanted to tackle the next big thing. She wanted to evolve. She wanted to grow. She wanted to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. And these are the things that entrepreneurship and the evolution of somebody started to materialize. And for some of you out there that's watching this right now, you say, I'm sick and tired of getting a job and then wondering the next three, four, five years if I'm going to stay there. I'm, I'm sick and tired of having a job. I'm like, I'm like this all the time. Boom, boom, boom. Want to be employed? I just signed a five, six year uh, car loan. I just signed for a 20, 30 year, 15, 20, 30 year mortgage. I just sent my kid to college. And I got boom, boom, boom. Look over my shoulder to see if I have a job, to see if I have job security so therefore I can pay the obligations I just signed up for. It's so up to you to evolve. And that's, that's a focus point for many of you in 2021 going forward. Do you depend on you? Do you depend on somebody else to say you're an essential business? Do you depend on somebody else to say you can be open or closed? Or do you want to be able to operate this regardless of what's going on in the economy and you start making money, cash flow? In an interview, how many of you guys know 50 Cent? How many of you guys seen his show Power on Stars? Okay? Everybody know 50 Cent. He said this. You're not making money until you're making money when you're not working. Mm. I didn't make no money when I didn't do a show. You see what I'm saying? I had to work to get the money every time. When I'm not in the show and the show is still, they go, how you keep yourself off your own show? Oh, I don't understand that. Right. I'm like, cause this is going on automatic pilot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number two. If you want to make more money, get your money game right and get it done like a, like a multimillionaire, you got to understand credit. There's a school of people out there in the personal finance community that, take, that says, man, ah, I don't believe in credit. I don't believe in credit. Okay. Here's, here's a problem. Let's, let's get that to in a second. But here's a problem, though. The enemies you have in terms of establishing not just good credit, but you want excellent credit. Okay? You want 720, 740, 780, 800 plus credit scores. The enemy to that is, not, number one, not having credit at all. So that school of thought of people is not having any credit. Boom. That's going to cause you to have a poor credit score. The, the second thing is once you do have credit, your enemies is not paying your minimum payment on time or your payments on time, whether it's installment loan or mortgage, credit cards not paying it on time. And a big enemy to that is also having a credit card maxed out to the tilt, especially when it's reporting to the bureaus every month. So you can't have maxed out credit. How do you establish it? Well, have a different various lines of credit. You want to have credit card debt, installment debt, personal loan debt, and show that you paid it off, establish a credit history the, the mix of credit that you have also is not maxed out. So I'm back to credit utilization. The, the key number there is 30%. So let's say, for example, you have a $10,000 credit limit or a $1,000 credit limit. Let's say $1,000 to keep it simple. You want to have 
that credit card reporting to the bureaus once a month, once the, cl the closing of the statement and the new, new statement period begins, you want to be able to say, okay, I have no more than $300 of my credit being utilized. Okay, let's say, for example, you didn't pay off all your credit card debt, but you allowed $300 to stay on a statement period carrying it into the next month. That's called credit utilization. 30% is the key number there. Well, Matt, what happens if I have 50% credit utilization? I have 50, well, it's not good. It's a ding on your credit. You're going you're gonna to go from excellent to good, good credit, even if you are paying your payments on time. Okay? And so, again, you have to make sure if you do have credit, it is on time. You establish a long-term history. And here's why you want to establish credit. If you want to make multi-millions, you want to get involved in investment, expanding your business, guess what you're eventually going to need? You're going to need credit. If you don't have good credit, guess what it also affects you? Your car insurance, your life insurance, your credit score is now becoming a factor in the payments and premiums of those companies you pay for for your car insurance or life insurance. So for example, if you want the best cars and you want to buy it through your corporation, the way you drive down the interest rate is to have the best type of credit. Or, or say, okay, I don't, I don't want to buy cars, but I want to expand and build an office. Well, guess what the landlord is going to ask? He's going to ask for your credit. Uh, well, he's going to ask your corporate credit. If you don't have enough corporate credit, he's going to ask you to back it with your personal credit. It's called personal guarantees. In, in this case, you want to have an office lease. Well, if you don't have established credit for your corporation, you have established credit for your personal credit, guess what they're going to ask you for more of? Larger, larger down payment, assuming that that landlord rents to you. But if you show that you have excellent credit and you have the third one I'm going to talk about here in a second, you're going to show, oh, this person knows what's going on. Boom, boom, they know the money game. Okay, this person is somebody we can trust over the next one, three, five, seven, ten 10 years to pay this office lease, to expand and grow the business. The third one here would be to host events. Would you like to host conferences? The sales and catering department of hotels, if you don't have established history or enough people saying you pay off your invoices and balances, what they're gonna ask for potentially is to pull your credit to host their event at their venue. And if you show that you don't pay your bills on time, if you show that you don't have a history established, guess what, they're gonna ding you or they're gonna ask you not to host their event at their venue. So credit is a big thing. And for a further breakdown, let's check out this video, how to fix your credit like a millionaire. Okay, so let's go to the third one, capital. So number one is cash flow, second one is credit, third one is capital. What are we talking about capital? Cash on hand, it's simply put, cash on hand. Some of the enemies here of stacking up cash is having to keep up with the Joneses. Number one, if you're starting to make money, don't feel you're obligated by the Mercedes-Benz. Don't feel like you're obligated by the jewelry. Don't feel like you're obligated by the nice clothes. Listen, for many years, my wife were cash flow millionaires. <laughs> and we had our colleagues drop us off, our business partners, new associates we even trained, people that we're mentoring. And they, we, we didn't upgrade our house for many years. What we're doing, because we're, we're stacking cash. And uh, they drop us off. And I remember uh, Angel Pagan, he'd be like, hey, Matt, Mr. Millionaire is is this your house? Is this your neighborhood? I'm like, yeah. Like, okay, Mr. Millionaire. <laughs> said, Bro, don't judge a brother.com. Now it's a completely different story. Now we have a, a beautiful home that we live in. We have cars and all this stuff. But for many, many years, as we're making millions, guess what we're doing? We're tucking the money away, tucking the money away, tucking the money away, getting our money to work for us. We weren't keeping up. We're trying to keep up with the Joneses. We don't, by the way, we didn't care if the the, the Cadillac that we had would open up the passenger door and it was so rusted and even though we put so much WD-40 on it, it'd go back, back. We close it back, back. It makes so much noise. We didn't care. Why? Because we were stacking cash. We were focused in on the long game. So don't worry. When you start making money, it starts spending money like you're a millionaire. No, no, you uh, want to make millions. You make hundreds of thousands, you make millions of dollars, but spend money as if you're making $35,000 a year. You had bills and a budget like $35,000 a year. That's... How you maximize, and by the way, how you max, maximize your capital is maximizing your cash flow. The second thing, don't get too much into risky investments. We put ten thousand here, fifty thousand, hundred thousand here. You're trying to, trying to gamble. Like I'm, like I'm, holding, I'm holding my breath right now for all the people trying to get on, in on Bitcoin right now. By the way, Bitcoin, there's a lot of legitimacy that's being poured into it right now. But if you're the type of person to say, okay, I'm gonna put everything I got into Bitcoin, and then it's, it goes drop, it drops, it drops. Listen. Right now, here's my opinion about, about Bitcoin. Millions are going to be made and millions are going to be lost. Times like right now is going to see who's got the stomach. But I would say right now, in terms of capital, if you're looking for capital to grow your business and trying to cash in too quick, 
on a risky type or speculative type of investment like Bitcoin. By the way, I just want to mention, I'm not an investment advisor. Take this as advice from somebody that's just a friend. I'm not trying to give you an investment advisor type uh, information, but I wouldn't speculate so much on something that has the opportunity to, to make a lot of money and lose money right away because show me the crystal ball. Who's got the stomach, especially when you're starting off as a brand new uh, a person that's looking to make your first million, that might be an invest, uh, that might be a risky investment for you to consider. Another enemy here because you don't have a systems to spend. You don't have anybody holding you accountable on how you spend your cash. Another enemy here is you think too short term. A very easy way for you to resolve all this is having a system here. I call it the 50, 30, 20 rule. Somebody asked me, Matt, how you start making money? We were, uh, I think, in San Antonio a year ago, two years ago. I said, hey, Matt, we're starting making money now. We're making 100 grand a year, 250,000 a year, 500,000 a year. How do we manage our money? And I share with them the simple 50, 30, 20 rule. Of the 20%, it's the easiest part to start with that one. 20%, 10% to your tithe and give. The other 10%, saving for taxes. Okay? The other 30%, you save. You tuck that away. And then the other 50%, you may not like this, that's what you pay your business expenses on, and then that's what you live on. So as Matt, I'm only making $5,000 a month, $5,000 a month, 20, if, I, if I take that $2,500, is not enough for me to live on and pay my expenses? Okay, well, let's start growing your business, start increasing your cash flow back to here. It's not your business's fault that you can't afford to pay the bills. You need to increase your enterprise, you need to increase your skills, so you sell more. You sell more volume or you sell a higher ticket type uh, uh, product. But the 50, 30, 20 rule has served us and helped us well because it kept us from overspending. It kept us in a high, strong position. I'll give you an example of this. In the 08, 09 Great Recession, in which I believe there's going to be a, a correction in the marketplace coming up. Why? Just so you know, here's my feelings. I think right now, Biden is going to be made the hero. Uh, Biden goes into office, they're going to make him the hero. He's going to have some form of shift in taxes. I'm not sure, sure how, how drastic. I'm not sure exactly the spe uh, speculation there, but he was looking to double tax from 20 to 40% in terms of gap gains for people making over $400,000 and above. But also, what I'm going to speculate here too as well is that uh, uh, Biden here is also going to pay off a lot of student loans. He's going to create a, st a stimulus plan. It's going to be his marker. I'm going to pay off a lot of student loans, forgive these student loans, and then I'm going to create another stimulus plan. Okay, here's the problem. Back to the national debt. What's going to happen is so much money is going to flood the market. Guess what happens to the value of your dollar? If trillions of dollars are flooding into the marketplace, just like the last stimulus plan just did in, in the pandemic stimulus plan just did in 2020, guess what happens? Trillions of dollars are flooding the marketplace, and your dollar, the more money that's being printed, the value gets less and less and less and less. So with that being said, a lot of people are going to be strapped for cash because they need to have money to pay for other things. They've overspent. They've kept up with the Joneses. This is what happened to me in 08, 09 during the Great Recession. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. Sadly, he was going through a divorce. And he says, Matt, I just bought a, a brand new Bentley GT. Sharp car. Psh, awesome. I was proud of him. I'm glad you had some areas of success. He goes, here's, a, here's the bad news, though. I'm going through a divorce. And so I need some capital. He told me he bought a, a brand new, I think it was a $120,000, $130,000 Bentley. He bought it new. He says, Matt, I paid it cash. They didn't use credit. And um, I need cash right now. Make me an offer. And here's what he says. Insult me. I said, what? Make me an offer. Cut me a check right now. Insult me. I said, ah, oh, let me kick it around. So I kicked it around for a couple of days. He goes, Matt, are you going to make me an offer or what? I said, bro, do you really want to sell it to me? I said, Matt, I don't, I'm not so sure if I got $120,000 to give you for a car. He says, Matt, just, dude, I just need money right now. I need to capitalize this thing, man. I need to let it go. Okay. Are you ready for me to insult you? He goes, hey, bro, throw me your best offer. I have no problem with you insulting me. I said, well, meet me, meet me at the uh, Chase at the, uh, at the, at the uh, Dominic's. Back in the day, there used to be a Dominic's, and the bank was inside the Dominic's. So I go inside there. I'm at the, I'm at the uh, um, right there next to the bank teller. I said, bro, listen, uh, here's my account. She's ready to cut you a, a certified check. I said, do you have the title? He goes, I got the title. I said, bro, the best I can do is $60,000. Matt. This brand new is 120,000 bucks. I said, bro, you told me to make you an offer and insult you on top of that. This is the best I could do, man. My budget, my limitation, my marker is 60,000 bucks. He says, Matt, can you up it a little bit? I said, bro, the best I got now, 65. Come on, Matt. Okay, the last, off, last and final offer. 68, bro, that's all I got. He says, here, man, 
Here's the title. I took his title, had him cut the check. Boom. I was, I was uh, looking at this Bentley in my garage, and at that time, I was, I'm a single dad of three kids. What am I going to do put my kids in a, in, a, in a car like this? Nothing. They're small at the time. So I put it on Auto Trader, okay? And I put it on Auto Trader. It's a $110,000, $120,000 car. I put it on Auto Trader. I think it was like ninety, ninety-five thousand bucks. In a week, I got an offer. So I flipped my 68 and made 90. Why? Because I had capital. So this car, I acquired this car. Now I acquired cash. So that's cash back into my bank account. Okay? I'm doing an annual review with the client. The guy says, Matt, I need to put my great aunt into her nursing home. And we need to let go of her townhouse right here in Harlem and uh, North Avenue. He goes, make me an offer. She says, make you an offer. Okay. I went over there, place hadn't been updated since like 1970, 1980, still old uh, furniture in there, uh, old cabinets, finishes, bathroom was, had been updated. I said, man, I, I need to put at least another five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 here to upgrade the bathroom and the kitchen and the uh, old furnace downstairs, like an old Viking, big furnace, I need to put a new Viking, uh, uh, a new H HVAC system in there, but this is old stuff. I said, the best I can do is $80,000. So what? Bro, listen, 8,000, man, let me run it by here. Calls me a few days later, okay, we'll take the offer. So meet me at the title company. Boom, 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 cut him a check. Title transferred over. I get my uh, contractors in there. Gut it out, when can you flip this? 60 days. Ended up being in uh, 45, uh, 45 days. We list it, in, in, a, in a process we list it. This townhouse now with brand new kitchen. Brand new town has been perfect, because it's right there next to uh, Concordia University. Let me make a long story short. We listed it. We sold it for 125. So my 68 became 80, became 125 after the sale of the property. And guess what? Guess what I did with this townhouse? And the cash from it, the proceeds. When all this stuff started to flip, I funded my business. And people wonder, how did you get to where you got? Well, I was patient. And I had cash on hand. I had capital on hand. So when tragedy stuck certain people, I was right there to cut them a check. Now, they may not have gotten favorably what they wanted for it, but without all the red tape and the riffraff, I gave them the cash that they're looking for. They were happy. I was happy. Solved their problem. Lightened their load a little bit. Became an opportunity for me. So the people that will win in a down economy are those that have cash and capital on hand. Not the ones that were keeping up with the Joneses. So at this point of the video, I want to wrap up here with revealing to you what the $21 trillion means. Here's what it means. $21 trillion means all the personal debt, mortgage and consumer debt that America has on the books, according to the Federal Reserve. America's in bad shape. A lot of people in America are bad shape. Again, the reason for you watching this video, so therefore you can stick up and out and create this opportunity for you to become one of these folks here in America, if it was so hard to be in America, how come there's 18.4 million people in America that have a net worth or wealth above $1 million? And you can be the next. So a few questions I want you to ask yourself as we wrap up this video. Number one, where do you want to be financially in 2022? What habits do you think you need to change in order to get there? What's it gonna look like? What's it gonna look like for you to have a perfect year, financially speaking, here in 2021, 2022? Next question, what is your game plan to get there? Do you have a step-by-step -step and duplicatable process? What exactly are you following? Are you learning from somebody that's been there, done that? Not somebody that says, oh, this is a great concept for you, but are you following somebody that has a process and a blueprint that has been there, done that? So therefore, you can avoid a lot of mistakes. Number three, do you have someone in your corner to teach you and save you mistakes? Who do you have counseling you on your decisions. So after these questions, if you don't have somebody in your corner, if you don't have a game plan, if you don't have a blueprint, please, that's a big reason for you to subscribe to the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. So as I wrap up, I want you to watch a couple of videos here. Number one, how millionaires create real passive income. It's going to shock you what some of the richest people in the world make in terms of salary. So check out that video. And the second video I want you to watch is how to fix your credit like a millionaire. Let credit be your friend. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be, don't be shy of it. Don't buy into the uh, aspect of something that you need to stay away from. Listen, in America, credit is right up there in terms of the importance of your financial health. Just don't abuse it. L lots of times people say instead of, instead of fixing the issue or using it to your advantage, they rather flight. Three, three different ways to fix an issue. Either you fight through it, you flight, or you freeze, 
or in our case, you process and you look for the opportunities that credit can play in your financial life as you journey towards becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. So that being said, guys, I hope you got a lot of value from it. Please, what are your feedbacks? What are your follow up questions? What do you think about some of the things we discuss here? Please drop it in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications the next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.